This meeting is being recorded. It's six o'clock. All right. Uh, I'd like to call the board of Lightning Power uh, November board meeting to order. Yeah, yeah, would you call the roll, please? Director Crum? Here. Director Kadotis, absent. Director Polia? Here. Director Welling? Here. Chairperson Westbrook? Here. Uh, can I get a motion to excuse uh, Director Canole for a scheduling conference? Motion. Thank you. Discussion? Okay. Danielle, would you call the roll, please? Hello? Yes. Pulliak? Yes. Dwelling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. Uh, next item is approval of tonight's meeting agenda. A motion to approve? There's a motion to approve. Second. Discussion on the agenda? Come on, let's uh, Danielle's couple. Um, yes. Pulliak? Yes. Dwelling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, uh, this is one of two opportunities here from our general public. We ask that each commenter provide their name, address, and any affiliated organization that they may represent for the record. Keep it to three minutes each. Dan will be our timekeeper. Mr. Cotton, you have the floor. Thank you very much. My name is Ryan Cotton. I live at 515 Park Avenue in Grand Haven. BLP customer, proud customer. Uh, I remember the, your 100-year celebration uh, of 25 years ago thereabouts. I'm here tonight uh, because I'm uh, I'm a member of the Sustainability and Energy Commission for the City of Grand Haven, um, specifically about community energy planning. I first was here um, in the spring of 2022 talking about this subject, and I just wanted to share five pieces of information with you tonight very quickly. Um, one, we got fundage due to uh, six um, uh, energy agencies, Ferry Square, Grand Haven Township, Grand Haven City, a lot of foundation, the Community Foundation, and also uh, Eagle. Um, secondly, we formed a steering committee. That steering committee is composed of representatives of each of those communities appointed and elected. And I want to especially thank uh, the Board of Light and Power, who dutifully um, encouraged and, and allowed for uh, Paul and Eric to attend. And in uh, recent weeks, uh, Rob has attended, and that has included uh, some movements in public bodies in the evening, which we really appreciate. Um, so that was uh, point one and two. The third point is we are we came up with a different name rather than BLP service area, which I kind of liked. Um, it's now the Northwest Ottawa Community Energy Plan, and we're putting the finishing touches on it and, and scheduling presentations at all the elected bodies in November and December. And the last point is we hope to be on your December agenda to uh, present the results. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, seeing no other people in the audience, we'll move on to uh, item five. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Make a motion. Second. Motion a second. Discussion? I think there's a, at last month's meeting, we talked about industrial sales, and we said we'd come back and look into it and give you a little update on that. Uh, Lynn has looked into this. Uh, and what we're talking about is sales, so not kilowatt hours, we're talking about dollars. So there's a couple things that we think there is part of it is how we allocated West Michigan molding, which was our third largest customer that went out of business last year, how we allocated that in the mix, as well as the cost of power being a little lower than what we forecasted. So the sales look a little lower than what we thought. Um, keep in mind these are allocated kind of every month. So you'll see this month it's actually starting to tighten up and, and Lynn feels that as we continue out through the, the year, these numbers will start coming back closer in line. So um, as you'll notice, residential sales are high, industrial sales are low. That's what I'm kind of talking about, that difference kind of mix and how we calculated that out. But everything makes sense. We're on target and we think it's going to level out as the year goes on. So no real big news there. Questions for Rob? And now, which call the roll, please? Um, yes. Poliak? Yes. Welling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. 
Uh, under the general manager's report, can I get a motion to approve the four purchase orders totaling $123,194? Make a motion. Second. Second. Um, any questions for Bob on these items? They appear pretty generic and routine. Approved in budget. Might be usually like a technical question. To yeah, ask we need some drive uh, cover drive. <laughs> from power line. So that, that would be the, I'll say the miscellaneous material. So we've already bought the cable, the switch gear, that type of stuff. So this would be your connectors, your terminations. All the hardware. Hardware, miscellaneous hardware. Yep. You had the big ticket items coming already, huh? Yeah, the switch gear, I think it's already been delivered. The cable's on order. That's the biggest ticket item. And so we have all the, this is probably our last big order for material on that. Like I said, some I call it the miscellaneous or the hardware portion of the yeah, we material. Wait for it. Yep. So we'll be uh, we open bids for that this the labor portion of it this week. So you'll see that come as a PO for next month for approval for the labor portion. So labor after Labor Day next year we'll be down there working. No other questions? Daniel would you call the roll please? Um, yes. yes. Poliak? Yes. Welling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. Our conversation yeah. the, the next item on the agenda is Public Act 152. So this is something the board reviews every year. So this has to deal with insurance funding. So <clears throat> back in 2012, so starting for 2013, the state of Michigan passed a public act that limited or put a hard cap on a maximum amount that public employers can fund for employees' health care. There's three ways you can do that. They give a hard cap um, dollar value. You can, if you're below that, you're, you're fully in compliance. If you want to go over that, there's two ways you can do that. You can do what they call 80-20 split, 80% employee pay, 20% pay, employer pay. Uh, that requires the board to authorize the above expenditures. The last one is what we're talking about tonight is completely opting out or exempting us from there. There's a resolution in your packet to do that. What that allows us to do is pay more than what the state maximum is. So I think you look at the state maximums there, this year they went up by 0.2%. I don't think that's very realistic. Um, if you look at what the inflation has done over the last handful of years, so um, it doesn't make sense. Obviously we wanna make sure our employees are taken care of. We're giving them good benefits. You know, Taking care of our, our people is very important to us. So staff is recommending uh, exemption or opting out of Public Act 152 for calendar year 2025. Thank you, Rob. I have a motion to adopt the annual exemption option as set forth in 2011, 2001 Public Act 152, the publicly funded health insurance contribution. I'll make the motion. Thanks. Record. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or feedback uh, for staff? Only well, when I looked into it, you know, the uh, average nationally is last year was 7%, it went up. This year, 6%, it went up. You know, I just know that's a it's uh in the states recognizing 0.2 percent which is kind of i don't understand where they get their numbers all the time but it is what it is um, our employees are very important they're the backbone of this company and uh yeah i think it's uh i'm glad that we up it up so I, if you don't mind a little input on percentages our premiums for our employees went up 11 percent our employees are required to pay 7% of that premium. So the BLP is paying 93% of the insurance premiums, employees pay 7%. Um, that's the employees. Retirees, this year, they did a very, well, go back to 11%. They did a good job. Our employees did a good job because with our consultant, Brown and Brown, if I remember correctly, they said their average they saw was 14%. So we're below average for everybody else. And go back to your point. Mr. Crum, about 0.2% doesn't seem realistic. Um, retirees, though, that was they were able to hold that constant. So you guys did a good job. The employees did a good job. And retirees did a very good job of controlling their expenses, and we were able to keep that 
the same, so no changes in uh, coverage, no changes in premiums. For the general employees, our employees, there was no change in coverage, just a change, 11% change in premiums. Those kind of hit how much the employees use the insurance? Yes. So they use it a lot, then it gets raised. Yeah. So you know there, there's there's a lot of work to do in this space. That I mean, it's not just a BLP issue. I shouldn't say you know Brown Brown see an average of fourteen yeah. percent. So insurance costs throughout the U.S. I think everybody knows are rising very quickly, and it's it's hard to keep a handle on. So Can we still have the wellness. Committee, yep. and who runs that now? I do. You do. Yes. Good. This committee was trying to get an awareness to the employees to be more healthy, more health conscious, so that they would evidently or hopefully um, use the insurance less. Yeah, right. So that was the intent. And who's been doing it for? Uh -huh. Um, I agree with uh, Director Crum. I think uh, our employees are our greatest asset of any organization, especially here. I think uh, um, making sure that we give world class uh, coverage to our employees is a good is a good thing. And in my opinion, this, these rates are world class. So not uh, approving something that's the bare minimum the state allowed doesn't feel like the right thing. So um, I support this uh, this all together. Do we include the employees on some of these committees or meetings or is this some kind of a union representation or something? So <clears throat> when we're looking at a lot of this stuff, it's it's mostly done by management. We, we bring them in probably more towards the end because there's so many questions to ask and, and bring that up. So this year what we did is uh, had a, a mix of union employees and general employees we kind of sat down and said, these are the options we looked at, tried to give them some information on how we came up with our decision. So are they involved from the get-go in all those conference calls and discussions with the insurance broker, so on and so forth? No. Are they brought up to speed and you know, kind of try to be, inform them, this is how we got where we're at, this is why we're making these decisions? Yes, that's what we're trying to do. Just so they would be better informed, you know, rather hearing it firsthand rather than secondhand, we might Feel more comfortable about the uh, That's kind of difficult to do with um, everybody has a, a job to do, you know, a lot of working crews and so on and so forth. So, pulling guys out of their um, normal day to day job to sit in, I mean, hours that, you know, Lynn and Danielle put into working back and forth with the insurance carrier, so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's a, that's a pretty heavy lift to try to get everybody involved and get, get that in there. I mean, I mean, these two ladies are professionals at this and you know they do a good job so I, I support them they're doing a great job I, I i wish there was a good way to educate everybody get them all up to speed and understand all the ins and outs of everything that goes into these decisions um and we're, we're trying to do that as best we can but there's also a limit to what we can do and also you know continue to do our normal day-to-day -day work so here's the question yep no no issue yep no other comments? Uh, Danielle, would you call the roll, please? Um, yes. Poliak? Yes. Welling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is the 2025 customer survey. So the reason I'm bringing this to you is <clears throat> next month, we are hoping to bring you a PO for Great Blue to do a customer satisfaction survey. Um, looking even further forward, in 2026, we'll be talking about our next strategic plan. So this is our last big customer survey you're going to get to help give you information or guidance maybe in, in strategic planning. So we're planning on doing our standard, you know, customer satisfaction. Have you had interactions with field crews? Have you had interactions with office personnel? How would you rate the BLP? Those types of questions are we're going to, we're going to get the industry standard so we can benchmark. But the question is, and I don't need an answer tonight, to get the board thinking about, um, is there anything you would like, topics, we could ask? Now, once again, go back to the professionals, let them write the questions, let them you know, get things we can benchmark against, things that you might want input on that would help in that 
decision making process going forward. So, um, I'll, with that, I'll kick it off for your guys' discussion. But that's really the topic of what we're thinking on. Like I said, we can't put everything in there. There's you know maybe a handful of things we can add without making the survey so long that people aren't going to do it. Um, but so keep that in mind. So if you have some feedback, we'd love to hear it. Have some discussion now. And I think if it works with everybody, if you if you have ideas even after the meeting, email them to me and we can make sure we compile those and, and see if we there's a way we can incorporate some of them. Is there a want or need for some internal generation? Security wise. And I know Sims was a standalone run and we really couldn't count on it, but I knew I could get 18 megawatts out of the diesel plant. Um, we couldn't wait the whole time to keep some people alive in the middle of the winter time. Um, with things black out. We were we had cars we could play. Um, if the grid would ever fail. Hopefully it will never do that, but if it did, we would have a card we could play. <laughs> Well, hardly would Director Welling I think that's a good question to pose to all of our customers. You know, we appreciate their feedback. I do know that most of this, the boilerplate questions, and the intent is to be able to ask questions that they can measure, right? So, you know, I got a question that comes up once in a while toward our board, you know, is accessibility, hours, you know, maybe uh, if there's a, some way of putting a question out there that could be, you know, measured against, but how maybe approachable or um, transparent, or you know, if, if we're if we're serving our public the way you know they'd like to see them be led, so I guess something like that. Board, the board, yeah, the board, yeah, the board, exactly. I'm sorry, thank you. Audit training is self evaluation. Hey, are you listening to the people you represent? Is there a question out there, you know, posed to our customers? That's something we can do better to represent them, I guess, is the point I'm trying to make. One of the MISO rules for the fleet of generation is a catastrophe on So, how, how will work? is if there was a catastrophe on the grid, we have to define that a little bit more. So let's just say they're gonna go, storm. let's say they're gonna go load shed, let's start there. Um, at that point, we would already be running our generation. Because they're gonna call and say, hey, max generation, if you got assets, turn on, right? So we'd already be running at that point. And at that point, if it still was not enough, and they didn't, have, and they will ask for volu uh, voluntary reductions in load, we're going to be followed just like every other one. Mike's going to say, hey, if we're going to lose 1%, we're going to have to lose 1%. And so we'll still have to go through that process. It's not like we can just detach ourselves. The question would be, I think what, what Director Welling was getting at, is let's say the grid was completely down. And could we do some black start and run some generation internally? The answer, I think, is you could. Um, but you'd have to, at, once they got the grid up towards you, you'd have to do whatever MISO tells you to do at that point, right? To, reconnect, so on and so forth. But you're not allowed to just say, hey, the grid's going down, we're gonna open up our island ourselves and open up and, you know, the rest of the world go away, we don't care. That's not how that works. So um, they would be, like, directly talking about an emergency situation, let's say, like the 2003, was a 2003 blackout where Ray ran across. So people that did have some local generation were able to run that if they could black start it. But once that grid started coming back to them, a lot of times they had to shut it down, resync up, and then maybe start their generation back up. Yeah, it isn't the bluebird sunshiny days of summer that I worry about. It's the days of January and February when it's sub zero level, when people's houses will freeze and people's lives are in danger. Those, those are the conditions I'm concerned about. The middle of winter. It wasn't there with the blue sunshiny days. In summer that I would sit at my desk and worry about it. It would be when it was some zero out, you know, we really have some cards to play. It's the Boy Scout game to be prepared. <laughs> Sorry, but it's, it's just me. I like it when we had cards we could play. I knew I had the diesel.
but it does give you flexibility. I mean, if, if like you said, you're starting to get to that max gym alert, you know, I, I, we've been here where we did run the diesel plant just for bar support before, just for the grid. Um, so <clears throat> there are there are benefits, but you know, if we are a local community or organization, and we need to do what they want. If they, they put value in it, then that's something we should pursue. If they don't put value in it, then maybe that's something we don't pursue. So these are the reasons to ask the question. Yeah, no, we went down this path pretty recently with, uh, what was it, uh, a couple of years ago, the, the plan on the island. And we heard loudly that it wasn't wanted. Um, but I just want to put it out there and see what everybody thinks. Yeah, I, I agree with whatever all the other directors are saying. I think that when with the last time we did the survey, we had like 83%, if I remember right, the number was high. People wanted local generation. Um, but there was a lot of people who didn't want it on the island. So, you know, I think now that the island's kind of off the table or not in play, I'd be, I'd be interested to see how many people, how many of our customers were interested in um, local generation. I think another interesting thing would be to see, I mean, Rob just presented at the um, city council a few weeks ago about the number of people enrolled in our green energy program at 0.23 people. 0.24 percent like that's <laughs> you know what is the interest level if we do do generation uh, you know the types of generation um maybe or even just the interest in you know we're doing a lot for sustainability we've got a lot of mandates but maybe just taking the temperature and the pulse of our community on you know the types of generation we'd be willing to accept um we don't just supply electricity we we provide security Form of electricity. You shut it off and you'd be surprised how many things you can't do all of a sudden. Um, people take it for granted. And since we have our done all the time, people take us for granted. But, like I said, it's not the bluebird sunshiny days of summer that I'm worried about. It's, it's the Januarys and Februarys, sub zero, snowstorm, blizzard, ice storm conditions. Um, I also like, I think Todd's comment was a good one. I, I think having some type of question on is the board meeting your needs for for availability and just a, a question about board performance and if they're happy about that would be great for our board self-assessment as an input. To yeah, they're happy with us. Are, are you happy with, with the service that you're getting from your board and availability? So I like that question sure. a lot, Todd. Yes, uh, people here have got high, high ratings, so. Hopefully we won't be on a curve with them, you know. <laughs> Hopefully we won't be. Dr. Um, how do you want these to, are you guys to take these and go with it, Rob? Are you going to want us to email you? What's the... Well, I've I got the one we just discussed here written down. So um, I think I can go with us. If someone comes up with something here in the next week or two, just email it to me and you can see it down. So I basically have some questions around local generation, types of generation, which I think kind of goes into renewable energy questions as well. You know, you know what's their, you know, um, as the sustainability committee has been going around talking about, you've been such their presentation. Presentation they took, they talk about good, better, best options. That kind of leads into that same type of discussion. Um, board transparency and board performance and approachability. So I, 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 that's kind of what I wrote down for some notes. Kurt's not here, and he may have a few yep. questions. Too, so, so I will follow up with him just to, uh, in an individual email to just say hey, this is a discussion we had and get his feedback as well. Next item on the agenda is the, the uh, good part of the program. Um, we can officially announce, I think we've already let most of you know, the Board of Light and Power has received two more national awards. So we have our uh, Customer Satisfaction Award. So we were last year, we were at uh, Bronze, we went to Silver this year. So that's based on some of these customer surveys we do. So we just did a, a small customer survey, online survey, as well as some of our other metrics that uh, they collect through, you know, customer service satisfaction, you know, what offers, what hours do you have, what programs do you offer, so on and so forth. So once again, good job to everybody here. Um, 
it seems like every every square of our our utility is is outshining the next one. So it's 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 a great problem to have. We're we're doing a good job. So and the last one we just got is a, a smart energy provider. So this is a three year award. So once again, that kind of goes to the sustainability and things that we're doing. Um, so we filled the once again this is an APPA award. So it's a benchmarking us against other national uh, municipal utilities. So congratulations to the BLP for that again. And you know there was a uh, once again, put this in the top top tier. So it's something to be really proud of. We're, we're doing a lot of things in renewability and uh, sustainability already. So just want to make that official announcement. We did send out a press release for them, but we did got a little plaque and trophy, so we'll be putting those up in the lobby. Do we have a trophy case or something for all these awards? Not yet. <laughs> we need some type of <laughs> <laughs> We'll work on that one. <laughs> Uh, all right, thank you, Rob. Uh, and congratulations to the whole team. That's, that's outstanding. Um, uh, on the chairman's report, we, we got a nice short report tonight. I think we're just going to talk about the two modules that we, we took this week, uh, which were lessons, lessons 11, uh, which was board meetings, and lessons 12, which was board conflict. Uh, we're going to follow the same format we have in months past and just um, pick on Director Welling first. Everybody just give a little feedback about what they learned and what they thought about uh, in the board module, the board meeting section, um, we pretty much reflected everything that we're doing now. It was, I was pretty much impressed by what we, how we follow our meetings and how we laid it out. You know, being effective, um, engaging, accessible, and productive. It, the structure of the meetings um, pretty much was same thing in the, uh, the lesson. And now we went to the board conflict one, and uh, yes, we uh, have experienced a lot of that and have a lot of yeah experience in it. And I much better prefer it the way that it is today than it was not so long ago when things were pretty tense and the emotions were high. And now it seems like we can talk and not get uh, emotional. And, be more productive in our meetings. So, yeah, it, it, those two were pretty much a reflection on what we do and where we have been. It's almost like he was here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree as far as um, the way the board operates. You know, when I read that, I essentially saw exactly what. Um, you all have accomplished over here. Um, when I looked at the conflict section, I think the, the only thing that was really missing is that conflict is actually cyclical. I mean, anytime you had a new person like me, you know, okay, you've got a new person in here, so, you know, we need to, to norm and say, okay, what's normal for Phil to get involved with, or how does he get involved, or how does he do his conflict? And then, you know, you go into the perform, area and, and then all of a sudden you're in the storm area you know where everybody's going how do we do that and then look into the storm and back into the norm again so it's just kind of a cyclical thing the important thing about it when you look at conflict is not to not to um you know walk away from it but to address it get people involved and figure out what is that person really saying you know, are they actually against the idea or are they, are they just against the way we're approaching it? Is there a different approach? What else does somebody you know, have to add? Dr. Brown? I like the, uh, when the instructor highlighted on, it's the board's, you know, first most and uh, most important topic is, you know, the organization itself and its stakeholders. I don't feel that we're always on the same page in that. You know, it's kind of interesting under the conflict portion of the training, you know, we had some very diverse views, that's for sure. And we had some very spirited conversations. And uh, throughout all of that, I just have to really, when I, after the training, I kind of reflected going back to some of our meetings. And I have to really take my head off to you, director, 
or Chairperson Mike on how you kept an even temperament and you know you kept the, the meetings uh, professional and as even keeled as you as you could. So you know, looking back, hats off to you. That, that wasn't an easy task, I know. So thank you for that. Thank you, Director Crum. I'll, I'll start by saying it didn't always feel that way, um, <laughs> and there was times. Um, I, there's times I've been um, not on the chair and frustrated and emotionally charged, and there's times I'm in the chair and feel frustrated and, and emotionally charged. So this this training did a nice job of reiterating uh, some of those um, checking your emotions at the door and um, everybody voicing their opinion. You don't have to like what people are saying. You don't have to argue. Um, and I think we saw a little bit of that last week. We had a, a 4-1 vote, but nobody screamed at each other. We've all walked out of here just fine. I mean, um, it's okay to disagree, um, but keep it healthy. Um, I think our board dynamics now with the current board we have is great. I think we did, we have a little bit of current board. Um, I think we're gonna be successful. So, um, on way we, we have in the last year. This you've been here in years. You know, <laughs> this one year, one year, my one year anniversary. Yes, yeah. Come along with me. Along with um, got aged. I you know they talk about the CEO's role in this too. Um, and you know not, not to get too charged up or have after back and forth and arguing. I mean all these things are good things to. Just good refresher. I mean, they're good refreshers for us all, even though we think we know it. It's good to hear it just one more time. It's that repetition piece. So, another good uh, training by Mr. Van Vandermeer. So, next week is um, In the Weeds, Not in the Weeds. Um, I'm guessing they're going to tell us about not micromanaging staff in that one or um, getting into the um, nitty, not the nitty gritty stuff, more the big stuff, but that's a good one. I think it's a short one, too. Um, so. Light for December. Nice and light for December. All right. Um, other business. Probably had a few things. Yeah, a couple things I just wanted to bring to the board's attention is you notice when Mr. Booth is not here, he is actually out in Riverhaven right now with, with Kim. So the BLP has partnered with the Ottawa County Community Action Agency. Now you can see I've got a little a door hanger here. So we made up some door hangers, and the Riverhaven staff actually went out and put these on everybody's door. And so we are having a, um, an open house at their clubhouse there where the Ottawa County is giving out information on how they can get funding to um, weatherize their homes for energy efficiencies. And we're out there giving out information as well, as well as giving out some um, kits for, you know, I think there's 100, well, I'll call it electricity kits and 100 weatherization kits. So the weatherization kits have things like Weather sealing, all that kind of stuff, weather stripping, that those types of things in there to you know keep the drafts and stuff out. The energy one would be more of our traditional LED light bulbs, night lights, those types of things. So uh, good partnership there. We're trying to get, you know, the, we got money to spend to help people reduce energy waste. And so we're trying to get the news out there and try to help with some of our lower income folks. Um, as I've talked about before, looking forward. 2026, the state's going to have a mandate to try to get one and a half percent energy waste reduction, and a large portion of that has to go towards low-income people. So we're trying to figure out some programs that we can get some good, good traction. What works and what doesn't work. So we're ready to go when that state mandate comes. So um, something new we're trying. The other thing I'm going to just pass this around to the board is I think most of you know that I have been at Harrisburg City Council and Grand Haven City Council um, presenting. Beside the the energy the steering committee for the uh, energy plan, um, so they're giving a sustainability community energy plan the CEP, and I went and talked about what I call the utility energy plan. What is the BLP doing? Where are we what we're doing? So, just for your information, passing this out, I think some of you have already watched the the meetings I've been to. So these are just the slides that they have handed out. So it's just for for your information um, on these things. So passing out. Um, Rob, question for you on the um, River Haven. So, did did Ottawa County approach us, or did we approach them? And um, how about the village <coughs> program? Is there any intent on 
kind of a two-part question in the intent on expanding. I mean, it sounds like a great program. So I think Eric would be the one to really answer that because this is kind of his, his baby. Uh, but I believe that I think it was something we reached out to them and we were talking about, hey, what options do you have? What do we do? And it kind of grew into, hey, here's an idea of how we can maybe work together. So um, I think it was uh, maybe Eric implemented, kind of calling out there saying, hey, what, what options do you have? Uh, but then it kind of grew into this. And I, I think, like you said, it's kind of a pilot program. I think depending on how well it goes tonight, whether or not we'll, you know, whether it means apartment complexes or other communities and that kind of stuff, how, how well this works. Because obviously, we want to get bang for our buck, so to speak. So. One more thing for everybody is just FYI is, I don't know if you're paying attention, but the city council did approve our Harbor Island funding procedure. Um, so that, that has been done. So looking forward is we have a couple of task orders that uh, I think Derek, public works director, will be here next month to uh, ask for our approval on to get us caught up with this current. Um, we'll also be looking at in January, hopefully he'll be here with uh, a contract for the coal yard cleanup. So we're moving on that. So the one outstanding item we do have that I would like some board assistance with is I think most of the board knows that we have some outstanding legal bills with the city for Harbor Island issues that we've been waiting on. So what I'm proposing is I'm going to have a meeting with the city manager and the DPW director and go through those legal bills and figure out how, how they need to be split up. So I would I would like some assistance from the board to be there to just oversee and make sure everything makes sense to everybody. Uh, so open to suggestions on who would like to make some time to carve out a, a couple hours and have, have a meeting with the city manager and myself to, for staff to figure this out. Yeah, I, I remember that those bills, those were the redacted bills that we received. I mean, these came to the board once before, right? Um, at least at least one time. Um, I'd like to recommend if, if maybe Kurt and I, Kurt and I could meet with, um, we, I think he's seen that list before. We could look, I think we're getting the unredacted copies going through the bills, figuring out what's what. I think uh, just my personal recommendation, you probably need to know what happened way back then. Um, and I think be, be a good, sure. and that would be a good choice for that if the board agrees. Great, I think it's a great idea. So I'll reach out with uh, to uh, Director Westbrook and Director Knoll and the City Manager to try to set something up to get a meeting on the on the board. Sounds good. Thank you. Adam. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, since we've lost our only um, participant tonight. Um, Motion to adjourn. I make the motion. Support. Can I call the roll, please? Adam? Yeah. Polyak? Yes. Welling? Yes. Westbrook? Yes. Have a good night, everyone.